Welcome back to the Murphy Boys Podcast. I'm your host, Insung, joined by your co-host, Justin, and we have Dan again today. Yo. So, how have you guys been? Justin? Oh, oh. Um, so I guess I've, I've been in North Carolina over the course of the past three months. It's been uh, pretty good, you know, um, <laughs> making money <laughs> naturally while in debt from my Wake Forest tuition. But no, it's been fun over here. Um, a lot of partying, a lot of schoolwork, a lot of everything in between. Um, yeah, not too much basketball, though. It's almost upsetting. They've been putting tents on top of the basketball courts. It's, it's almost like it's frustrating. I can't. I literally, I look at it and it disgusts me. I want to vomit. I get nauseous. Honestly, yeah. I'd end my life. I drop yeah, out. Disgusting. Yeah, I drop out. <laughs> there were times where I was standing on top of my residence hall and I was just contemplating, you know, like just just everything yeah but my hall has been pretty vigilant about 2k so so i've been oh. grinding the sticks a little bit you know okay okay the next gen one looks looks kind of nice yeah yeah no, no I, 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 footage. really yeah they just i saw the footage like on instagram and twitter it looks it looks kind of nice it looks it looks like way different than uh the regular 2k Oh shit! All right, that's fucking sick. sick. Yeah. You know, hey, cool. I mean, at the same time, I feel like 2K kind of runs the same sham every year. Yeah, of course, obviously. But usually, when it goes from like, um, uh, like from, from like Xbox to Xbox 360, it was like a huge difference. And like yeah, Xbox 360 to like Xbox One, it was like a big difference. So I think it's gonna be pretty good. I mean, you gotta keep the consumers on somehow. Like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, no, right. It's gonna be expensive though. Oh, yeah. I bet those uh, VC packages about to be up. Yeah. Oh my god! I spent so much money on it. Like last year, I spent like probably like five hundred dollars. So bad. Oh shit! What'd you play? My team or my part? Yeah, I played my, my team and just ripped packs. <laughs> like crazy, so stupid. My team was yeah, always yeah. dirty at the end of the year, but like it just wasn't worth it. I uh, know. I get it, yeah. So then, uh, uh, what's it been yeah. like for you? Because you've been going to school from home virtually. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm going to UConn right now, but I'm at home just chilling in Natick at the at the, at the hometown right now. Um, nothing much going on. It's very 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 boring. I got a new job at Dairy Queen, uh, so that's about all I'm doing. I'm hanging out with my girl. Um, and oh, doing, okay. doing, doing schoolwork. Not much schoolwork either, because my school like really really easy. So it's very boring. Like there's not much to That's do. That's a common trend I'm getting. Boring that word. Yeah. I'm just going to school from home. Because of Corona, like everything's just it's like a shell of like the the world is like a shell of what it used to be. You know. It's throwing everything around a bit. Yeah. No, uh, it's, yeah, it's crazy. There's in yes. Vedic. Vedic is really really dead right now. Like there's the, I I usually hang out with the boys like like here and there. You, like when the Celtics were playing, uh, when the bubble was going on, like we were hanging. Like every time the Celtics would play, it would go crazy. But after the after the NBA season, like it's just been really slow. It felt like the NBA season was like carrying the whole like yeah, time yeah. time period. You know. Big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I was yeah, a little surprised that uh, Justin got to go to school. I am, I am uh, yeah no I was really happy I mean in the end I kind of think it's a money grab by the school because yeah, they could have very easily fucking cancelled if things got worse, <laughs> like if things happened but luckily we've only gone to that state now and we're almost done so they can't really do much at this point uh, yeah I could have I could have sworn that like that's why I, did, I chose not to go to UConn because like I could have sworn they would have just been like for, especially for like big schools and like big state schools they could have just been like yeah it's getting worse like just go back home but they just been like sticking through it like they don't care how many cases they got they just keep it yeah keep doing it like, exactly I mean, yeah, they gotta make their money somehow. Like, they're still businesses, you know. Just yeah, like, no, it at is. the end of the day. Justin, what do you feel like are the biggest transitions from Natick to North Carolina? It's a good oh, question. that is. I mean, uh, my hall for the most part is pretty like northeast heavy. Um, I uh, there's kind of background. Okay, we're good. Um, anyway, so yeah, no, but there's definitely southern presence, obviously. Um, like everything around here is very southern, like kind of not like hillbilly because it's in a city. It's just not a big city. It's like Winston Salem, so it's like you'll get like kind of like country guys like with hats on and shit. But uh, the campus itself is like pretty northern. What else is there, Ben? I guess just kind of living by myself has been a little different. I've honestly really enjoyed it. It's kind of like a lot of freedom. Yeah, and you just do what you want. 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, you have you can basically do whatever you want. Uh, I have like chem classes at four o'clock on Fridays. Those suck, but I'll just skip them all the times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Are you all online? Chem. My chem isn't. My chem's in person. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, no. So it's not that okay. bad. Um, I mean, I like my in-person classes because the kids in it are pretty cool. Like, I have a group of kids that I, like I'll study with and like hang out with all the time. Um, I've been <laughs> obviously, dub. yeah, huge dub. I'm so happy I got it. Um, yeah. They have a bunch of um, bars in this one area of Winston Salem where a ton of kids go all the time, so that's always fun. I guess kind of just adjusting to lifestyle where you're kind of always doing stuff a lot, even in quarantine, which is really nice. So like yeah. being. Like, like being in this hotel room for the past like five days has kind of been like a reset for me. No, no, no. Let me just step in and say that the Murphy Basketball League doesn't condone use of illicit substances, <laughs> and uh, our players would never ever consume any. I only drink Powerade, of Power. course. Of course. Of yeah. Course. When when's yeah. the drug testing and the? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's probably going to be December first. Write it down. Write it down. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's I, Michael's I, secret I, stuff. Of course. Of How, course. How's uh, how'd you get like friends? I was just wondering because I'm going. I got confirmed to go next semester. So oh, sick! Oh, congrats. congrats. Yeah, thank you. Right. I'm really excited, but I just want to know like how you got friends. I was just wondering. Oh, absolutely. So my roommate was a huge help. I mean, he knew a bunch of kids coming in, so I met kids through him. Um, also, though, just kids in your hall. Those are the kids you'll be closest with. You're always with them because yeah. I mean, I don't know what kind of living arrangement you have. Like, I know Instagram's in the suite. Right. I'm self though. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I don't even know but, for next semester, but yeah, keep going. No, my hall is super dope. I mean, everybody, it's really social. Like, there's some halls on campus where kids don't come out of their rooms, so they're just miserable. But my hall is like very social. Kids are fucking running around all the time. <laughs> there, uh, there's always stuff going on. That's so fun. So yeah, like we all we watch all the games together. There's a lot of big Boston presence. So oh really? Yeah. That's One of the kids is Zach Henderson actually. Really? That's interesting. Yeah, oh, from wow. soccer. He played GPS. The kid's yeah. filthy. His name's George. He's from Dover. He's like. He's so good. You think they just like put everyone from like an area or like a region in just one hall? Or was it just randomly there's mad people from Boston? I mean, I think it's just random. I mean, I also have like two kids from Kentucky, a kid from Virginia, two kids from Florida. Mm. It's just there's two from. Yeah, yeah, so it depends. But That's interesting. No, like once you start, like, especially with the kids in your hall, those are going to be your first friends, I think. All right, but yeah. For me personally, it helped to have virtual, I meant uh, in-person classes. So since I'm in a solo suite, right. it's hard to get to know people like around your dorm. Yeah. I mean, obviously you're not, you don't have people around you, but mm. if you have people classes in person, you eventually get, have to interact with them, which leads to connections and that's how I've gotten to know people. That's such yeah. a dumb. So yeah, uh, right. Dan, if you go on campus, will you be attending in-person classes? Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, there's like, so right now for UConn, there's like some in-person classes. There's like, there's only like a handful of them though. Um, but I think I kind of have to to like stay there mm-hmm. because they're they're they've confirmed it, but they haven't like confirmed it confirmed it because I haven't chosen my classes yet. So I have to choose a class that has in-person so I can like guarantee a spot uh, to stay there. But most of the classes aren't. Um, in person there's a lot a lot a lot online it's like all kind online. of up in the air but you'll probably be going yeah mm-hmm. like i'm like 90 sure i'll be yeah. going so yeah no that's sick no, that's sick i mean yeah. on campus experience is just something else yeah after that's this cool. semester like i just i just can't stay home like i, <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't blame you yeah it's yeah. so, so the nba bubble they it gave us a pretty cool experience you know watching players go at it without any fans yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I, I, yeah. The bubble is one of the best NBA. Se- I'm gonna say the one of the best NBA seasons ever. I gotta honestly. agree with that. I gotta agree with that. Like one of the most craziest uh, NBA seasons. Like one of the most revolutionary NBA seasons. Like this is like the new normal. And for them to pull it off this well too. Like Adam, this proves how good Adam Silver is too. And like Chris I Paul, and I think say. Dwight Powell, who are the two players that like led it uh, to the uh, like the players organization. Yeah, Paul, like amazing job. Legal, legal. Uh huh. Yeah, sir. He lived in my uh, dorm. My residence, my residence, my residence also. Sick. also. That's so sick. Yeah. But yeah, the NBA the bubble that. was just so, so, so sick to watch. Like, especially the playoffs. Like, even without the fans, like, they created an intensity and the playoffs were just good in general. It was just, like, amazing basketball. So, it was insane to watch. 
the intensity of the competition it, it reminded me of a uh, community center days of course but i mean at it. definitely at it. obviously like not as much competition you know, as community it's a lower center. level of competition but <laughs> yeah but yeah. yeah it was like jimmy but like the jimmy butler like the cinderella story i know and lebron like getting his fourth it was just like a fairy tale like it was like we're living through history already and to like we're li- and to see like the bubble uh, unfold like in front of us is like living through nba history too there were so, so many to watch. too like like Damian Lillard going off at the start of the bubble to Lou Dort yeah. walking down Harden. Now. Yeah. Also, oh yeah, so Lou Dort. You would say that. I'll, I'll, I mean, Harden did kind of block, kind of block. Yeah. Yeah. The crap out of Lou yeah Dort. They won the yeah. series, so it I doesn't. Mean, I'm just, just saying, Lou Dort had a great. He's had, he has a bright upside though, like defensively. Like if he get if he gets like his shot down, like he can he live in the league for like twenty years. He hit seven threes in a game seven as a yeah. undrafted rookie. That is yeah. crazy. That's impressive. That is crazy. Be- before, like, if you didn't watch the game and you just saw Game 7, you might think he's a good shooter, but he's actually, like, pretty trash. Because they were literally, like, giving him, like, the Ben Simmons shoot. Like, they were letting him shoot. And eventually, like, obviously he's going to hit, like, that many. He's a pro. He's going to catch fire. Yeah, he's he's been there. So, he's going to do that. I mean, they play the numbers. Like, obviously, you you let a bad shooter shoot. That's, yeah. You've got to give up something. And yeah, like, that the day Rocket, to be Blue Dorf's day. Yeah, the Rockets are, like, so statistical. Like, Daryl Morey and um, who's the coach? I Mike D'Antoni. Mike D'Antoni. The, Mike D'Antoni. They're so, like, statistic, like, focus, like, only layups and threes, and, like, they focus on advanced analytics, like, so much. So they literally play the game that way. So for them to just, like, let him shoot whenever and, like, do that it was, like, a part of their plan. And it worked at the end because they won. So The Rockets are very – I felt like the past few years they've been a very inorganic team. I don't know if you guys know what I mean by that, but it's like they, they their team was so analytically structured and they played yeah. so much through the numbers and analytics. Yeah, it got to a point where it was like it was good for the at the start. Like they, it was like changing the game of basketball to um introduce like advanced analytics. But the Rockets just did it too much. Where to a point where it was like like unwinnable like you have to play more simple basketball not just focus on the numbers all the time the small ball was revolutionary it just didn't pan out yeah i mean the lakers are just i mean they were the best team in the league yeah like, for sure they were they were bound to win it like it, even though there was a bunch of parity in the league more than ever um for like the past five years this year people knew coming into the season that like the lakers were the lakers and the clippers uh were like the best two teams in the league and yeah the lakers won obviously because of small ball anthony davis anthony davis is insane by the way he just dominated he small ball he so, yeah he was unguardable. Yeah, anthony davis was unguardable throughout throughout the playoffs so. speaking of the clippers though that was a catastrophic disappointment yeah. oh my god they really dropped the ball there i know jeez the, the memes after that were so funny like the like the pandemic p and stuff like i know as a non <laughs> as a non clippers fan it was so funny to watch like everyone they were like the laughing stock of the league but i can only imagine being like a clippers fan bro that must suck but, but the clippers they're used to it on themselves like yeah like they were acting bro i don't yeah, even Mark, know what they're gonna do next next year yeah go ahead justin Oh, I was going to say, Marcus Morris was acting kind of like a little bitch. I'm not going to lie. He was kind of pissing me off there. I know. He the way he hit, he hit Luca, the way he hit Luca in the first round, like, there's no point. Like, they, like they became, after the bubble, they became one of the most, like, hateable teams just because of the, all the, like, antics and stuff. And their chemistry was yeah. horrible. That's probably the reason why they lost is because of their chemistry. Just, yeah, you're right, yeah. Just goes to show that, like, no matter how great of a player you have on your team, chemistry is one of the most important things in basketball. Yeah. You can't win without good chemistry. Yeah, it's crazy that like people were like Kawhi Leonard's good enough where he can just take off games and Paul George is good enough where he can just take off games and they'll be fine. But it proved that like load management isn't effective because they didn't get to play with each other enough to get practice and they just crumbled the one day like and they started blaming each other. Like it was just a bad situation. And Paul George just sucked <laughs> for no reason. Yeah, like, he, he was, was so trash. bad. He was poor basketball. Yeah. Like if you if you're a star and you play that bad, like you lose respect for the role players like they don't respect you anymore if the role players are playing better than you like it just he let them down so much that just like spiraled down like a bad path i feel like his poor play wasn't the only part of it though so before 
all that happened uh he was talking trash to dame and obviously yeah. like if you're oh an insung's man i'm just saying if you're gonna talk that talk you need to walk the walk and Clearly, I mean, they made it further. I mean, they. I'm just saying, they made it further than Dane. They did make it further, but <laughs> but but are the expectations? Compared yeah, expectations. Yeah, the yeah. Cancun, the Cancun on three thing from Patrick Beverly, so it's funny. Backfire. Oh my Back. god, so <laughs> funny. It's so funny. But yeah, bro, I think like the way he reacted to that little social media beef, like after after Dane talks about um his family it was over because i think he's like super sensitive about his family because yeah. because he he impregnated a stripper by accident and that's his wife now so like i bet he's not proud of that you know so when he brought up his family like he in- immediately backtracked and said sorry to dame like maybe that truly affected him like who knows that wasn't the only thing either though like at the start of the season i remember paul george was saying me and Kawhi are like the two best two-way players in the league like i don't know how you can beat that and like if you're gonna if you're gonna talk you need to be able to yeah back it's true play. i mean they were like they were doing like they beat the lakers on opening night and all the clippers fans were going crazy they like, built the hype yeah they built the hype but they just let it down like the Jokic and jamal murray though or, that is an oh my god they're gonna be good for so long like they're so yeah they're, they're both so they, young the chemistry is so good the nuggets are like i used to hate on the nuggets before the bubble but after seeing their like whole team with bull bull michael porter jr and like they're still role players like they're all like they're no scrubs on that team like everyone that plays is well known and they have such a bright future they compete they've, they've got heart we, yeah, like so important. No, right. Jamal Murray at like twenty five and Jokic at like twenty five got to the conference finals like two uh, three one comebacks in a row, which has never been done. Like, yeah, not, that's not to mention that. Yeah. yeah, they also have Michael Porter Jr., who is like a rapidly improving young guy. Yeah. Like, like he could provide, he could be the missing piece. Honestly, he could be the difference between the Western Conference Finals or however far they made it and the actual yeah. championship. He's a yeah. crazy X factor. I yeah, like no, I, I still feel like Jokic's jumper is a little underrated. Like, man shoots like Kyle Krauss, <laughs> and he still. Knows. I don't know how. He <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Over for real. Yeah, I don't know how he makes some of that. Make some of that. The Anthony Davis, he was bullying Anthony Davis, like the top two defensive player of the year, defensive p- player of the year, and he was bullying him down low and like shooting over him with ease and like killing them for a little bit of the of the series. You guys watch what Jokic does in the post. He just calls for the ball, bodies him down, and throws up a hook shot that falls in. I know. He's, He's just so like talented. Like it's nothing but talent, you know. He has amazing touch around the rim, like yeah. on those floaters and little hook shots great touch it's insane and i'm really like i can relate to him and i became a fan after he lost like all the weight that he did over over quarantine yeah the huge weight like that made me like a huge fan of him because like i don't know it's just like so inspiring whenever someone does it i don't think something that perfectly resonates for you too so i i can see why like that'd be inspirational yeah like especially through basketball and because of basketball like the way he did it is like it's just very inspirational to see that yeah no it's impressive it's nothing short of that that really worked for it yeah we love to see that see that so for me personally like a huge thing that when i watch basketball is watching players emotions i just feel like that's so important to me like wanting to see players win like raw emotion and i saw that all over murray and Jokic's faces through every series like they really wanted to win that's what you like want. You, you have to have heart to come back down from 3 yeah. 1. Like, winning three games in a row, especially against the Clippers. And the Clippers were in game five on a closeout game. They were up almost 20 points going into the fourth. Mm-hmm. Like, at the end of the third. To have that much heart is like, says so much about them. Like, I know they're going to have a bright future. They've earned yeah. respect. Yeah. yeah, they have. No, like, they they, they were done. Down. Yeah, no, they were down twenty at the half. I remember in game five, I think it was in game in game six also, and they kept on. Like, they, they never gave up. They kept on yeah. going. They're they're like the most relatable team. They're like it feels like they're like the regular person, and they're beating teams like like way better than them. Like it's the most like relatable feeling, you know, like the underdog feeling. I feel like there were yeah. a lot of underdog teams this season in the yeah. playoffs. Oh, yeah, the Miami Heat. The Heat. Oh my God. We're yeah, talking about heart. Really the true. Heat, yeah. the Heat had every inch of heart. Like it, it pained me. I hated the Heat for beating the Celtics, but like, <laughs> yeah, honestly, they deserved it because like 
they just won. out they outplayed the Heat like I, they outplayed the Celtics because the Celtics are on like lineup wise are so much better. They have three to four All Stars, so and the Heat just came out there and played with the grit. Like that culture is just insane. I mean, did you see how many re- offensive rebounds Bam was getting in that series? Like, oh my God, I Daniel Tice got murdered. Yeah, Ugh. that's what the Celtics are missing. Even despite like the size difference, I felt it was just like Bam wanting it more. Yeah, and you got to sure. more in basketball. For sure, like the heart of the Heat. Like because of Jimmy Butler, like the culture he built of the, the hard work and ethic, like mm-hmm. tra- like translated th- to every single player and every player like played with heart. Like even Jay Crowder was did not miss a single wide open, like open three when in that series. Like he was lights out. Like Tyler Hero yeah, yeah. dropping like thirty seven in a playoff game against the Celtics. Like a, the, and the Celtics were ranked the best defense in the bubble to drop thirty seven. Like that's insane. Yeah, and I know you already I mean, talked about this, but if there was one team I think you and I would want to play for, it'd probably be the Heat, just because of the culture. Yeah, for sure. Like, like they, like what we did at the community center, like going every single day and like working, is basically what the Heat are like emulating in the in the NBA. Like even like like people like Duncan Robinson is a perfect example. I know. I know yeah. you. I know you said you played with um, a person that knew Duncan Robinson. Yeah. It's- but like Duncan Robinson is like the example for working hard like going from D3 to working your way up to D1 Michigan like that's crazy first of all just to get to that point and then the NBA and then and the NBA playoffs to go crazy like that and over a span of one year to become one of the best shooters in the league is just like insane it's an insane feat like you just gotta have to applaud him yeah, and that yeah, comes yeah, yeah, yeah. all the work he put in during unseen hours, like when, yeah. when people weren't watching. Yeah, I mean, like what, like in, when you're in D three, you think like, oh, I can never make it to the NBA. Like it's such a far fetched idea, but he believed in himself. Like he worked, he like worked and got the D one and did all this. And it's just, it's a, it should be like a template for every kid that has hoop dreams or dreams in like any sport sure, in general. Sure. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm, I'm, Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Justin. So, well, just relating back to that idea of like, you know, like, like them being new to the league and everything, I think that really benefited them, honestly, when it really doesn't benefit most, most because of the confidence they had. They, they've been yeah. through those setbacks and they came back just with pure confidence and that honestly fueled their run. They were hitting three pointers at a rate I've never seen, honestly, against the Celtics at some points. It was crazy. It was like, like, I, I don't know. It was, like, it, was, it was like watching the 2016 Warriors, honestly, a lot of time. They, Tyler Hero broke like a three point record. I can't remember. Yeah, like it, insane. Like they, they're just and and a huge reason why the Heat were so good is probably because they had nothing to lose. They had no expectations. Like they weren't expected to. Yeah, they weren't expected to even make it out of the first round. So they had nothing to lose. That whole entire bubble and the whole entire uh, playoffs. Um, so they just did whatever they did with 100% confidence like they weren't worried or anything you guys know that Duncan Robinson didn't even start in high school yeah I yeah, I saw that on like Instagram that so is, I was like, that's, that's so wild. cool that's wild that's insane obviously he's best with, blessed with like being 6'7 but like at even at time, like yeah. like still it's just insane I mean it should be struck to something else it's yeah a, it's a beautiful jump shot so it sucks. Quick. It sucks that he's like 26, but I still feel like he's gonna have a a good career. Like he's like he's gonna be a similar player to like Clay Thompson yeah, if he can sure. up his defense, or even like a JJ Redick. I mean, his game doesn't require any athleticism. Yeah. So age, it's, although it's it's a factor. At the same time, it's not gonna be a huge factor. I mean, look at yeah. Kyle Corver. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. This man's running now. He weighs 39 years old. Yeah. 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 Still, still running around. Still, like, like even that, I feel like Duncan Robinson, if he's, like, 30, 37, like, he will stick with him in the corner. Like, that's five-out mm-hmm. spacing, you know? 6'7 or 6'8 can get off threes so lightning quick. Yeah. I've got a job in the league for sure. Have you? Did you see the video of him in the corner uh, shooting, like, the really quick jumper? He doesn't even bring it. so many it, times. Yeah, he doesn't even bring it down. Like, he, he, it's like a bounce pass, catches it at the chest, and in one motion releases it and makes it in, like, less like less than a second. It's insane. If you watched him during the uh, the Celtics and Lakers series, 
like if his defender was any shorter than him, the second he caught it, he'd just pull it because he knew yeah. he'd get it off on them. It's without crazy. Any hesitation. And like the screenplays, and the, the pick and roll with Bam. That's why with Tyler Hero too. That's why it works so well because you have to you have to stick so close to Hero and Duncan Robinson that you like when they when they get screened, you ha- have to go up on screen. And then Bam's such a good center and like an up and coming center that he's gonna roll in- instantly and get that dunk off. Especially if like for the Celtics when they have a weak center, like it's easy for them to do that. Bam is an incredible passer too. Yeah, that block he had on Tatum in that first that's game. Nasty. That's block. Oh my god. That that, that, that like, like statement statement game. Yeah, that was a statement block, game. Block. But hard to do that in the first game. But it, oh my watching god. Watching that, it was like it was crazy. I was watching. It with I really thought Tatum was about a game. Yeah, like I was watching with like twelve people, and it, we were all so hyped. It was like overtime. We we thought he was gonna dunk it. Like he was so aggressive through the lane, and it was such a heartbreaker. Like it was. So Heart wrenching to watch as a fan. Yeah, no, no. I was saying as me. I was in this uh, this triple. It was like it was like one of the bigger rooms in my hall. Watching just a bunch of kids, and it was just absolutely like gut wrenching. Yeah, I just it's so yeah. hard to watch. Two things from that game one though that I want to point out that I feel like are underrated. So down, I want to say three or so. Jimmy Butler hits a three, and he hadn't made a three you know in a long time. Like he just yeah. pulls these three out of his asses. He shot like 24% percent in, the, in the season from three, but like you don't notice it because of how well he played. When his team needs yeah. it, he'll bring out every every part of his toolbox. Like it's it's probably because yeah. because they were in Florida, there was like no restrictions for quarantining or anything. They were probably working every day. Like yeah. players, like the young players, got way more time to de- develop. You know. And also the mm-hmm. other thing I wanted to point out was Goran Dragic. He, like throughout the whole playoffs, he was so underrated. He was a uh, so yeah, yeah. The injury in game one to his foot really like that cost him that whole series. There, to, there were, it was, there were, he was their leading scorer. Like for him to go down like that and like the maestro of the offense, like he controlled it. For him to go down, it was so tough. They, they, he need him badly. Like the shot making, yeah. the control of the pace, yeah, uh, for, extension, which yeah. is the better presence. Like, presence for such a good season. To end with like an injury filled finals was kind of like kind of sucked to watch, but it w- like the game, one of the games where Jimmy Butler went for like a forty point triple double, that was like one of the best games in finals history. That was incredible. Oh, that was one of my favorite games I've ever watched in my life. Wow. Yeah, that was amazing. That was, that was all hard. Just, all hard. Yeah, and, and LeBron had like thirty five to himself too. Like it was just an insane battle. It was it was Butler who had like thirty five, and LeBron had like forty. Yeah. yeah, it reminded me of the Celtics versus Cavs game in the Eastern Conference Finals in 2016. When uh, was it Avery Bradley who had the game winner? Oh, uh, two yeah. game two. After losing by whatever 50 points the first game. Yeah, you know, it's virtual it's, moments in basketball history. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Oh my goodness, Baller, Baller left it all out on the floor that game. Yeah. Let's trans- transitioning from like the playoffs. Your team is the Cavs. So, what do you think is the future for you know your team and like a bunch of other lottery teams? I ain't gonna yeah. lie, it's, it's looking a little rough. Our team's a little uh, it's it's getting there. I mean, we've got a, we've got the fifth pick in the draft this year. Yeah, it's, uh, I heard we're working booty. on Obi Toppin. You no, know, I don't. I'll just take whatever we can get at this point. <laughs> we probably should have gotten the first pick, but what do you think about Drummond? Uh, he puts up amazing stats, but I think it's pretty well known that he doesn't, he's not yeah. incredibly impactful, especially considering he's a traditional center. Yeah. The, this day the, the value of Drummond is so weird. Like, it's like the only player in the league that puts up, like, historical rebounding numbers and still win. scores at a good rate, but it's just valued less than, like, Less than like Daniel Tice or like Brooke Lopez because he doesn't have any yeah. utility. Yeah, like it's crazy. And uh, um, the team that's gonna have to pay him next year because he's a free agent. Whoever that team is, that's gonna suck for them. And I, I have a good feeling he's gonna be the Charlotte Hornets. This coming season, <laughs> have, what, the next yeah, season. yeah. Darius Garland looks very cheeks. I'm not gonna lie. You think he's cheeks? I like. Yeah, him. I really like. Him. His, I mean, he still has potential because he's so young. But like, to have Colin Sexton and Darius Garland on the same team, like one of them is like one of their growth is going to be stunted. Yeah, inevitably. Is questionable. Yeah, I mean, 
Like, no matter what, they won't yeah, let me think about Kevin Porter, too. Uh, oh, Kevin Porter Jr.? No. no. He's good. Uh, yeah, yeah. We brought him in for pro- I mean, he's younger. On, like, a, a cheap rookie deal, so got nothing to complain, complain about him. But, uh, I mean... And Kevin Love, too. Kevin Love's a bit of a weird case. He doesn't really fit in with this rebuilding team, but at the same time, like, not much we can do with him. Yeah, he has the most trade value though for yeah. you guys. Even though he has a pretty big contract, like if you can get even like even like a mid lot like a lottery pick or like a mid twenties pick, like that would be or and like a young asset or something, like that would be perfect. He fits yeah. in Kevin Love fits in very well to any team. Yeah. His versatility is great. He does. He's a post up I, that can shoot lights out from three. Oh, yeah. you know, I would love to see him on a contender, absolutely. Like, just, just I feel like it's been so long since we generally got to see Kevin Love play in like, like an important game. Yeah. So I haven't really got to watch him as much. Honestly, as much as I don't like the Celtics, I feel like if Love went there, they'd be a much better team, just because he fits in with their like switch everything, uh, space out lineup. Yeah, positionless basketball. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would say Love doesn't really fit us because he's not like a true center. What we really, really need is to get rid of Gordon Hayward and get Miles I've heard that one a too. lot. Yeah. That, and that's something that like is also like pretty realistic because like the money matches up and the, like we have enough assets and the Indiana Pacers are also like interested in Gordon Hayward. It's just that like Brad Stevens and um, Danny Ainge, the general manager, is so attached to Gordon Hayward because... Um, he used to coach them in Butler. Like, I don't know if they'll let him go, but that would be the absolute best scenario for the Celtics. I mean, they also get Yeah, I mean, Gordon would be... Gordon would be... Yeah, Gordon would be on one if he didn't accept that player uh, player, uh, player option. <laughs> player option. Oh, no, yeah, he's I mean, he's throwing away a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure he is. But I feel like that's a deal that could happen, like, this offseason. No, I yeah, agree. It, it I mean, like, he's definitely a tradable piece. A tradable piece. Yeah, like the Celtics, they would have Kemba, Brown, Kemba Smart, uh, Tatum, Brown, Tatum, and Monster. That's an insanely good starting lineup, especially for the future too. Like, that's such a good starting lineup. I just love watching Brown and Tatum. Honestly, I mean, they just make me happy. Honestly, just knowing them and their potential. Their potential. Mm. I feel like I feel like Tatum could be an MVP within the next five years, especially if this... Because the Celtics have the potential to get the number one seed. And if the Celtics get the number one seed, like Tatum is winning MVP. I can see that happening within the next five years. Yes. I, I also... Uh, another thing about the Celtics team this year, I just... I, just, I was not a big fan of their bench depth. I really did not think they were going to make it far just based off of that. Like, like yeah. we had a lot of rookies on the bench. I mean, Carson Edwards... Uh, Shit, why am I forgetting your names? Um, Williams. Well, Grant Will- oh, Grant Williams actually got playing time. Yeah, he was oh, the ugliest player in the league. Brad Wanamaker, yeah. I was going to talk about the last podcast. That's probably yeah. why we lost um, in the playoffs, because he's so ugly. Like, he exactly. needs to just leave. He, like, does. he needs a nose job. Yeah, like, he needs a... He needs plastic surgery, like, on his whole face. <laughs> like, yes. he just has to get out of the NBA or just, he just needs to stop playing basketball because he's way too ugly for that yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's not he's not he's NBA material right there. Oh, yeah. well, actually yeah. according to sources you know when Tatum went up for that dunk on Bam he was about to yam it down and he looked over to the Celtics bench saw Brad Wanamaker that yeah. distracted him so much that Bam was able to get the block off he actually saw yeah. Brad Wanamaker smile and his oh. teeth he, he has a big gap in his teeth and it's so ugly and his nose he looks like a bird half the time <laughs> and he looks like Birdman also so <laughs> Tatum on the way to his dunk probably saw him and just missed it on purpose because he didn't want to play anymore like why would you want to play with someone that's that ugly on your team like I would just I, don't I would really. if I was like a max contract player and he was on my team I would honestly just like walk away <laughs> yeah yeah I'm not saying that Brad Wanamaker sold out the season for you guys, but it may be. A he was the sole reason why we lost. I can't blame him <laughs> anything else but Brad Wanamaker's ugliness. I mean, I mean, you could not pay me a Gordon Hayward contract to pay with him. No, okay, no, no chance. Not no no chance. No amount of money. Uh, they're going to need to cut him soon. Uh, yeah. Can't deal with that. But on the other hand, I know um, Chris Paul is one of your favorite players in song, and he used to be one of my favorite players. He's still one of the, my favorite players to watch and like an all-time great. What do you think is going to happen with him? I think the move for him is either Milwaukee or the Lakers. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm, he, I think he came out and said that he'd be in, he'd be open to the idea of talking with the Lakers. And I mean, obviously, Milwaukee's a pretty good market for him because yeah. Milwaukee desperately needs like a playmaking game closer. Yeah, they they severely lack that right now. If is he a free agent? Yeah. Well, I mean, no, no. Oh, okay. But oh, no. Oh, no. Now that the Thunder are probably going to look to rebuild, uh, they're probably yeah, more picks. Yeah. yeah, more picks on top of the uh, huge chess yeah. picks they have. And oh especially, it. especially if the Clippers experiment fails, and they they hit a reset, those picks that oh, the Clippers oh, gave oh, up oh. will be so valuable to the Thunder. They're gonna have they're gonna have another. Um, KD, Harden, and Russ type thing going on. Yeah, that's it's insane to think about. But they're, they're going to have like a Ronnie, Imani, Imani Bates, and like, yeah, I don't even know. Like, they're the, going to be so crazy. The Thunder's front office is crazy. I know. The well, only mistake, the only mistake they made was trading James Harden, which is one of the stupidest yeah. mistakes in like NBA I mean, history. I don't feel like it's difficult. It's so difficult because it of cap space. That too. No, they also. had the cap space. It was just oh, luxury really? tax. From the, it was just luxury tax from the owner. Like the owner had to pay like, I think one million extra, and the owner's a billionaire to keep. Is he gonna pay one million for James Harden? James Harden. Yeah, he wouldn't. No, it was like yeah. no, it was like six million extra or something each year in luxury tax. But the owner's a billionaire. James Harden, James. Yeah, like the owner's a billionaire. No, it would be coming out of the owner's own pocket. That's the thing. Because the luxury oh, no. tax. Oh, no. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but like that's so worth it because you're a billionaire. Billionaires so. are low key stingy with yeah. money. Yeah. I mean, also the amount of yeah. revenue. Revenue. I guess they had revenue with yeah. Russ and Russ Katie, but, but I mean, they're still. I mean, they're missing that piece. So. I feel. Like, I don't know. I feel like it's hard because they would have had chips. There's only one ball, and for Russ, I mean, for Harden to grow into the player that he is now, like an insane, like historical offensive player, he needed his own team. Yeah, of course, I agree. But Harden wouldn't have become the player he is today, but he still would have been a player that could have averaged 25. Like, he wouldn't have been an... He might have not been an all-time great, but he would still be, like... Because he was so young still back then. He would have been, like, the perfect third or even second star if he surpassed Russell Westbrook back then. Like, he would have still been an insane score. I feel like the Thunder were betting on either Durant or Westbrook, or, like, one of the... Or maybe both over Harden. Yeah, like their their growth over Harden. They just prior to, prioritized it over that. That's one of the biggest NBA what if stories. Like we could, that, that's going to be talked about for like years and years. Probably. They had four yeah. consecutive amazing draft picks. Uh, yeah, yeah Serge Ibaka. Yeah, Serge Ibaka, who's a, a very underrated. He's a, he's a, yeah, he's yeah. one of the one of the better power forwards, and he has been for the last couple of years. He's the best shot blocker in the league for like I think like two years, three years straight. Yeah, they call him Serge Ibaka. I know. So, it is mm-hmm. Joe Rubin. Yeah, and no homo. He has the nicest body in the league, and he has a he has amazing drip too. Like I know, honestly, like, yeah. I, would, I would give him some top if he asked. Like oh, oh, I'm not. I'm just keeping it like. Yeah, keep it hundred. I um, oh. might let him put it in my butt if he asked. So. Yeah, we might have to cut this part out. <laughs> but anyways, moving on. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> why, don't, why don't we just move on to a whole different league into the Murphy Basketball League? Okay, mm, I love that transition. So, All right. what are your guys' thoughts that come to mind about the summer tournament? The summer tournament. Three different yeah. outcomes for all three of us. Yeah. Uh, you guys want to go first? I'll let Justin go first since he's the champion. Oh, the championship experience, of course. You know, my back is still a little sore. Oh. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> All right. I mean, I know. I mean, I, it was great playing, but like at the same time, you know, it's like at what point do I get a little rest here? Oh, you know, I can't be doing all the work. You're calling out Garrett or Chris or? I'm oh sure God, Chris. Mm-hmm. No, he just. I mean, I mean, you know what? You know what? No, no, no. We won the championship. You know what? Garrett and I really balled out. Chris was all right. Yeah. Chris, um, Chris no, is also there. like the consensus cutest player in the league. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I don't think so. <laughs> well, we can all agree that Chris is pretty sexy. Anyways. Uh, so, Insan, you go. So, I mean, my first thought was. Justin's game winner in the first game was crazy. That was 
Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, that, was, that was a storybook ending. Like all, all over you. So in the first podcast, we had actually talked about the possibility of adding Adam Morgan to the league. <laughs> and, and in that podcast, Justin had said, you know, I'm going to hit a game winner over Adam. And right. Jen, in an hour, just like, oh, yeah, yeah. It actually ended up happening. <laughs> he spoke it into existence. All that <laughs> hard work. Exactly. Was like, it was crazy. Part of a champion. Yeah. He's a, I mean, I'm saying the Miami Heat drew inspiration from somewhere, so. Yeah. They probably took it. Duncan Robinson probably saw your Murphy Basketball League footage. Not going to lie. Absolutely. No, I gave it to him, actually. He was asking me. He hit me up a couple of times on Instagram. He DM'd me, you know, for the fans. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Obviously, Jared and Chris are, like, great players. Huge, uh, huge for winning. But yeah. I thought I felt like Justin was the X factor of that team. Like uh, That's they, exactly what I was going to say. They needed it. Yeah. Like, especially in that first round game with Ian going off and uh, Garrett having a very low scoring game, they needed Justin scoring. Yeah. It, how does it feel to lose multiple years in a row in the first round and so you start to become like a rust type player maybe maybe you're the problem um, actually I've only lost in the first round <laughs> two, two, two times actually one two seasons ago but uh, I mean um, I'm just getting ready for the upcoming winter tournament you know staying in shape getting shots up and I'm not saying I'm going to have a revenge tour but a revenge tour okay the, the, the washed king tour are you like LeBron I mean I'm just getting creative <laughs> <laughs> so Jan, what are your what are the biggest things that come to mind from the summer tournament for you so for me um i prepared a lot for the summer tournament but coming on the day no excuses obviously but the day of was a whole different story because the the days before leading up to the tournament i was actually away in cape cod and i was doing some things that were like you were that, participating in I don't, activities that required a lot of uh, oh, oh. that were mental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, <laughs> and it was like it was like yes. things that I that I prefer like to keep to myself, like off, off away from the podcast, you know. Of course. So the day of <laughs> check this, check this. was actually very difficult uh, for me to get into the rhythm because I was still feeling the effects. Um, let's say hypothetically, of the night before and that weekend so the first i think the first couple layups that i took were actually hit like the top of the backboard like they weren't even close oh and they and i couldn't even dribble but apart from that like eli even though i love to hit on eli like it's my favorite thing in the world he actually played a really good first game like honestly he he put towards the end too like he had the game winner um over you and some and the fading away one like towards the end of the game <laughs> towards the end of the game like he put uh, the team on his back when I was struggling in the first game and he got it done for us like and I didn't play the way I wanted to play in the tournament even though I prepared pretty well which is 100% my fault um, but yeah and Austin Austin um, not gonna lie, since he's not playing in the next tournament, I'm gonna say this. He was pretty, pretty booty <laughs> for our team. I was expecting him to, you know, like speed and like do some stuff, especially on the defensive end, but he was absolutely <laughs> god awful. <laughs> Um, he was probably also feeling the effects oh, of, oh. of the previous oh. um, So he was under physical and mental duress. Yes, of course. But and he he probably went um, two or three times as um, hard as I did personally. Oh. So I can understand why he played that way. But the way he played was so disappointing to what I was expecting. Do you think uh, the use of illicit substances was why Takeover Austin was mentally suppressed? Uh, <laughs> of course not. There would never be such thing happening in this league because it's such a noble league, and we're all of like, of course, being Carter being never. a referee. Come on. We're all I mean, children of Carter, like of God. Exa- so. I was about to say that. I am with Carter. I'm his brother. Yeah, I'm a child can't, of God. We can't do that, obviously. We were just doing some, like, you know, very hard math, let's say, for example. Uh, yes. Yeah. So it was mentally very draining, you know. Yeah. But the first round, yeah, we got through it. Um, it was pretty easy because they had a dis- defensive liability. Oh, so it was, playing like a 2v3. It, was, it was playing like a 2v3, oh. basically. But the, oh. the second, the finals, um, we, got, we got off to a really slow start. I remember the whole game. Mm-hmm. Um, up till, uh, after like 10, uh, like 
10 points they went up a bunch and it was just like um, our team like trying to fight back and at that point like Eli had lost some momentum like we were getting tired Austin was still playing like absolute garbage <laughs> and I was just sh chucking threes like I, I, I think I led the um, uh, scoring uh, for the finals but honestly like I was I shot probably more than twice of what everyone else shot um, and one of the shots one of my shots actually at like the top of the backboard it was really embarrassing but yeah it was just very disappointing even though getting to the finals in my second year was um, a proud moment it's just not wait, 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 to my second own expectation that was first year Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My rookie year, getting to the finals, leading my team to the finals, um, was was great. It was a good experience, and I can't wait for the winter tournament, um, where I think I'm gonna dominate. What are the uh, the plans for that right now? So we found a gym that's very cheap, uh, rents by hour, and I'm thinking right now that if we can just get everyone in place by a specific date, then we can make it happen. Yeah. That sounds amazing. Shit. Hold on, you guys just gonna... Oh, I'm back, okay. Did you hear what we said? Uh, I heard part. My Wi-Fi is kind of terrible. So basically, we found an indoor gym that offers uh, rentals for very cheap. So I think that as long as you can get everyone collectively on a day, we can make it happen. All right. Awesome. awesome. We're slowly starting the process awesome. of uh, gathering players, uh, building the player pool, and, you know... Yeah, of course. Like, trying to bring it all together. <laughs> Your, wanna... your team your team is amazing like you and some i mean you garrett like your whole um the front office for the league is amazing you know you know we're impeccable. pushing we're constantly pushing boundaries uh yeah working to make sure things are happening it's great i gotta say Kameen is just a uh, yeah. icon i know adam silver looks to him for uh yeah. inspiration you know actually for the bubble like the idea of the bubble like apparently the commissioner garrett that like funded funded the idea to him you know really yeah i mean commissioner dean is a man of very 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 few words but yeah <laughs> when he does have to say something it's usually chris slander <laughs> the, i think that's one of the reasons why he's so great because he only speaks about one word a day but that one word is so uh, significant to, to the world in general, you know. Exactly. Well, Garrett speaks. You listen. Listen. Yeah. Cool. I mean, we're true legends. Like yeah. I mean, I just want to go back to the first round game where our my team battled against Dannon. Mm -hmm. I had a very, very, very subpar game. You know, I mean, I, no usual. excuses. I had to play better for my team. I disappointed. Uh, I thought that Eli had a phenomenal game for Keith. He, he like, did. He just went off. Can't yeah. expect much more of him. You know, I I sort of expected to see takeover Austin. You know, his mm -hmm. one point doesn't indicate much, but yeah. you know, Eli came alive when your team needed it, and God, you passed us. But yeah, for sure. And the Eli slander is absolutely my favorite. And this joke that Eli couldn't make threes for the like the weeks leading up to the tournament were hilarious. What you <laughs> but he said that wouldn't matter. That man cannot shoot. <laughs> and song, let's not forget the shooting slump that you were in before that tournament. That was a different kind of shooting stuff that I've never seen <laughs> any player been in before. Like, you couldn't buy a three, and you were supposed to be a shooter. Like, you, leading up to the tournament, like the most important day of the year, of the calendar, you couldn't make a single three when we were playing at Murphy. And you kept saying that you were going to get out of this slump. And you kept saying that you this is not my new normal, but in fact, like it became a new normal. Like you just can't shoot threes anymore. Unfortunately, uh, I it looks like I was a predecessor for Danny Green. You know, I yeah. had to break out of that slump, but I wasn't able to, and that still haunts me to this day. I, I wonder, like, if I made one more three, what, what the outcome would have been. You know, one more three, two more threes, anything to help my team, but I couldn't get anything it done. Anything revenge season. Revenge season. I know. Yeah, that's why. That's why we have this winter season, the bubble, NBL uh -huh. bubble, um, going on. This is my it's going to be an exciting season, especially playing indoors for the first time. Mm -hmm. I know I'm a rookie, but mm -hmm. you guys have been doing this for a while at the same court. Playing indoors is going to be a completely different game. I mean, I'm a different monster. Whole new game. Whole new game. With all due respect. Yeah, yeah whole new game. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. What were you gonna say? No, I wasn't gonna say too much. Just go ahead. So I was just actually curious. What what uh, two teammates would you guys like to see 
play with you guys realistically in the next tournament, or somewhat realistically, because we transitioned to a three on three league. So chemistry is really right. important. Justin, you want to go first? Oh yeah, I can start absolutely. I mean, I mean, Garrett Bean and I have played with each other. I want to say three out of the four tournaments. So my chemistry with him is great. I mean, a pure big, just a joy to play with as a pure shooter myself. I mean, he's willing to board for me. I mean, it's, I don't need that much, but but when it's there, it's nice, nice. So um, so that he's always fun to play with. Um, and then I'm actually looking to play with Kai. I think. Oh really? Another big? Just just. I, I I think just because of his versatility. I mean, I know his jumper's a little broken right now. <laughs> <laughs> but the versatility, I love the arm roll, his length. It just is very hard to defend. Interesting. What about you, Dan? Uh, do you have the player pool by any chance? Because I know there's some new players, so I don't know if oh, you're there. Player, but oh. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Could uh, East School Luke be coming out? <laughs> no, he's too good for this league. Come on. Yeah, he's understandable. He's understandable. He's, uh, I've heard he's never missed from the corner. Not even once. Never. We actually have a highlight tape of him going up against Owen Harney. You know, it was a battle. <laughs> one of the greatest one on one games probably ever witnessed. Like, it was crazy the to, energy to was watch in person. Yeah, I had tears coming out of my eyes from how beautiful it was. It was it was tough to see Owen win because um, I, I was really rooting for Luke, um, a hometown hero of mine, a uh, childhood friend. But it was it, he put up a great fight. A lot of air balls, a lot of uh, dribbles off the foot. It was great to see. <laughs> I mean, I feel like Luke was set up because there was no corner there. Yeah, honestly, like that was so unfair. I mean, would expect Luke to score if there's no yeah. corner. Like he can, he's a corner specialist. If there's no corner, like he's not going to win. It's just facts. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a complete player pool since it's still in the process, but right. I can bring you up a couple names for you. Some new names would be, uh, the, well, at least the big new name is Will Lederman. Right. And uh, oh, was Will Lederman? What? I believe so. And a couple of oh, veterans man. are. Oh, uh, let me think. We've got. Chris Lopez, who you have a very odd relationship with. Uh, I mean, the chemistry is outstanding. Very, very, very good relationship. We've got Ian Connolly, who, was, who went off in the last tournament. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me think. Uh, we got Eli Halpin, your former teammate, who right. you could potentially run it back, with, even though he cannot shoot a three for his life. Right, right. Uh, we He's got, pretty bad. Very bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Carter Sprouse is making his return to Natick. Right, right. The return of Christ. <laughs> and it's gonna be like Good Friday when it comes back. <laughs> <laughs> and we've also got uh, Adam Zimbel Marcus. Mm. Oh. Okay, interesting. I so, mean, he's been, he's been running a lot of pong over at Awashu. Of course, it's water, <laughs> naturally. But yeah, I'm yeah, saying, I, I wouldn't be surprised if his shooting stroke ping, was a little uh, ping pong. Ping pong right? Yeah, yeah. Ping pong. Ping pong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, so. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. For me, I have um, really good chemistry with Eli because I've been playing with him for so long. So I really wouldn't mind um, even though he playing is with bum. him again. Yeah, even though he's a bum and his drip is honestly like one of the worst I've seen. Like he, it's he dresses up as if he's homeless. <laughs> but um, yeah, I wouldn't Almost mind I wouldn't mind playing with him again. Me and Chris have a very good relationship. So I, I highly doubt um, that we will get to play with each other just because of the way um, things work usually with the draft. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't mind playing with him, honestly. Um, and Will Lederman, he's an exciting new prospect. Some say he plays like LeBron. Um, oh. So, I yeah. I think he plays like football or something on the side. Yeah, yeah. I, th I heard he's like, I like football. Like, I football but, or something. Yeah, I've seen him play a couple times um, after you guys' departure for college um, at Coolidge and stuff. He's a real spark plug, and he does play somewhat like LeBron James and kind of look like looks like LeBron James. Absolutely. Not going to lie. So he's a very exciting new rookie. He's like the Zion of the league, honestly. Mm -hmm. So it would be exciting to play with him just because it's a new experience, and I've never really played on his team. So it would be interesting just to see, you know, connect with him and play with him because I'm not really close friends with him but I you know I know of him I can know him so it'll be interesting to play with him but honestly for me um, being the alpha that I am I wouldn't mind playing with anyone you know I believe that I can take my team to the championship with 
any teammates around me. I love me. to hear. I love to hear that. Um, Championship mentality. Jimmy Butler mentality. Yeah, uh, it really doesn't matter who I have. Like, obviously, I have better chemistry with these guys. But if I don't have chemistry with someone, like, I'll go and build that chemistry with someone um, by working working out in the lab. You know. That's what I mean. Um, yeah, so I really wouldn't mind playing with anyone. Um, I, I know I can take my team, whatever it is, um, as a first option or the second option. I don't mind um, taking them to the championship and winning the championship. Mm-hmm. Also, I'm a different beast indoors uh, that people aren't ready to see in 2020. So, I mean, I know that you and I used to have a lethal pick and roll game. Yeah. In the case that we're paired together, in that case, I think you can make a comeback. It could, it could. I've transitioned away from being, you know, a screener and a roller because I um, play more guard naturally now mm-hmm. after we haven't played for a while because we used to play with really um, not, not that many bigs. So I was one of the bigger people uh, mm-hmm. back then. So I haven't been setting screens and like rolling, doing that as much. So I, I would be out of touch for that, but there's no reason why I can't reform that, you know? And I mean, our pick and pop game with Weekle. Of course, that's unguardable because we're. I mean, I'm such a great shooter, and you're like a all right shooter. All right, so they would have to. They would have to <laughs> well, not guard good. both of us moderately um, highly. <laughs> and when at my peak during my pick and roll, like I would be able to roll mm-hmm. and get the slip off of on everyone. And not so, just that, like we used to have like fake handoffs, like dribble. Yeah, because our we we. I mean, that's what happens when you play every day. I know. Like your chemistry gets insane together. So it sounds like some 2013 Warriors. Warriors. Type of uh, type of play right here. Right here. Yeah, I'd say I'd say we're like um, the 2013 Heat. Like I'm like LeBron, and it sounds like Mario Chalmers. Honestly, like <laughs> it's crazy. Big four, big four. Yeah, and if we match up against each other, like in the finals per se, I doubt you'll get there. But um, <laughs> or in the first round, like we know each other's games so well, so it'll be interesting. Whatever happens, it's a new season, the bubble season. Whole new game. Um, whole new game indoors. Uh, exciting rookie a big rookie Will Lederman coming in like Zion um, it's going to be very exciting Commissioner he did mention that Lederman has, has something inside him where he can turn on like a insanely competitive gear turn it up a notch and no matter what sport it is he'll do anything to win so I think that's going to be interesting to see like a, yeah, it, a competitor I've, I've actually seen that um uh, at a couple pickup runs, um, in my invitational only, obviously. Black Ops, um, Black Ops, yeah. At Coolidge, um, when his team was down, when his team was down, um, he started pulling from in between the three point line and the half court line, and he's brought his team back. And he usually doesn't make a single point during the game, and still takes those shots during the game, and usually misses. But when it comes down to it, and when it comes time. He usually hits that shot, and he's such a big body. Um, the defensive presence, even though he's shorter than some of the bigs, mm-hmm. he can bang with them uh, down low. Which is important. Yeah. He personally told me that he he thinks his player comparison is Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart, yeah. Like, that, I can, I can see that. like a dog on both ends. I can I can see him being like a game seven Lou Dort as well. They're built pretty mm-hmm. similar. Um, yeah. Honestly, like he's very exciting. It's gonna be very interesting. You gotta love um, like, someone who competes, like yeah, with their heart. As it's gonna be like the bubble in the NBA, you know, it's like a bubble in the M- M- MBL, just more revolutionary than the NBA. More competitive because so. we're actually yeah, of we're course, of course. We do. We do. Yeah, and what do you think about a, a potential prospect of adding a bag time J? Um, honestly, honestly <laughs> Jaden Rogers is an amazingly oh trash basketball player. One of the worst oh I've God, ever played with answer. in the world. Locker room, locker room cancer, locker room AIDS. Um, one of the lowest uh, work ethics that I've ever seen in a human being. Um, it absolutely plays zero defense. Might as well not even play basketball because of the how little amount of defense he plays. It makes no sense how someone can just chuck up uh, contested mid-range shots um, and play absolutely zero defense. Not even try. Let their man go past. Forget where their man is. Don't even know where the ball is on defense. Like it just makes no sense. And with his new TikTok um, 
virality oh yeah, I've seen going on. Oh um, I think I think he's a little bit too famous now to play in the <laughs> NBL because he's he's going so crazy on TikTok and with dealing with his heartbreak, you know, it must be really tough. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean I think just, every time he says "tip me up," all the real ones know, you know, on the Snapchat story. Yeah, I can relate to his uh, heartbreak. You know, I care deeply about that. Yeah, he so. he reminds me he reminds me of a little bit of like a juice world or something, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but on the court, he really reminds me of um, Brad Wanamaker, also because he's pretty ugly. <laughs> so he's a, he's he's a mix of like Brad Wanamaker and like a prime Kent Bazemore or a Kevon Looney. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, it would be interesting to add him though, because it would be very easy to score on him and everything. Um, so adding him would be like um, a charity, a charitable thing that the NBL could do. You know, like uh, extend like a wish. helping hand. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. like someone like make a wish. It would be very interesting. I mean, you're not rocking with his one foot on the line mid range pull up. Honestly, <laughs> it's one of the most um, revolutionary sh- shots I've ever seen because it is revolutionarily horrific. Like the Rockets, the Rockets um, game plan of only shooting threes and layups probably originated from them seeing back time Jay shoot all those <laughs> horrific jumpers. <laughs> and the best part is it doesn't even go in. It, like he takes those jumpers, and I mean it's fine if it like goes in, like it goes in, but it is. So so bad that it, it like just never goes in sometimes it's like the backboard and comes off like in his layups like he doesn't even look at the rim during his layups like and they're so inconsistent like sometimes he makes the toughest layups um it makes no sense um probably luck but the other times most times he just comes off like the top like the r- left corner of the backboard like it just it's unfathomable it's honestly like mind mind boggling I mean, let's just say he had the volume shooter badge, not the volume shot maker badge. <laughs> he <laughs> is one of one of a kind player, honestly. Like Peter Agbazi might be better than him, honestly. Like he would be a better b- addition oh, to him. Right. Not well, even that might that might be a bit. <laughs> that's a hot take. It's a hot take. It's a, <laughs> that's a thing for sure. But. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might be a cold take once Peter goes pro. Yeah, that's true. What does movie come out? Yeah, dim from dim from uh, has to be shown um, before NBL games. Like, like it's just such a rev- like it's changes the world, you know. Exactly. I hear he's got Oscar nominations. Yeah, I heard. I heard uh, Marvel. They're actually casting him for the next Black Panther. That's what I heard. No way. Yeah. Black icon. Like he's gonna be an Avenger. So. So I just want to steer us back on the topic a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Just for you now that you're a champion. I mean, I mean, I personally always lived like a champion. You know, I always felt that I was a champion growing up, and I think that's kind of part that mentality is part of the reason that makes me so great. So great. So nothing's really changed for me. I'm still, I'm a champion. I've been a champion, and I'll remain a champion. So same mindset that's going. Beautiful into answer. Of course, of course. I mean, you gotta hold the title. I know. A lot of people, a lot of people coming for that title. Exactly. You know what? It's nothing to me. Nothing to me. I'm above it. I'm right now. I'm I'm on the top of the world. I'm not gonna let my guard down. <laughs> I'm driving the two K sticks. You've never seen a man run so much pick and roll in his life on my team. My team. <laughs> so so. I mean, I have a, I have a feeling I have a feeling that the champions of the previous uh, Murphy tournament are going to be overconfident. Me personally, is my is my speculation, and they're not going to put in the time and effort. And I think there's going to be a new champion crowned. Honestly, I don't think. I honestly think. I honestly think there won't be a repeat champion. I think all three people will be new. Really? Like all? Yeah. Every single- Every single person on the team will be new. So I know, I know, um, Chris has won the won the league. Um, you have s- somehow, p- probably because of Chris, won the league. Um, <laughs> Garrett has Garrett won the <laughs> league. Like Justin's won the league. Score ten points and seven points in my uh, finals run. Yeah, but I mean that was probably because you were being guarded by like the absolute worst player. Probably because you were being guarded by like Jupe or something. Oh, are you calling but- Justin the absolute worst <laughs> player? <laughs> Justin? Oh wait, did you guys? Be- oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. Oh, played against Justin. No, no, no. In the first round. <laughs> I yeah, Garrett, Garrett was probably guarding you, and Justin was guarding Chris because Justin's such an in- impeccable Obviously, defender. Obviously, I was covering Chris. I mean, Chris was locked up heavily the whole entire game. Yeah. But anyways, um, yeah, I think I think honestly, the way the teams pan out, there could be three brand new champions that we've never seen before. That should be really interesting. 
Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I can't speak for Justin, but I have a slight hunch, like a small hunch, that Garrett and Chris have grown a little complacent with uh, their championship, and I don't know if they're going to be ready to defend their title. Yeah, I can see. I can see Justin. I can see Justin still putting in the work hard at Wake Forest, um, especially being from such a um, hard basketball culture with Chris Paul and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I know he's a tremendous player on 2K. I mean, so I I'm know he's putting beast, in the work. Beast. I know he's putting in the work. Yeah, but yeah, I just don't know about the other champions. Like, I obviously you guys being vets in this league don't want to see a new champion because you guys are like the old heads of the league. Um, but. I want to see some change, you know, uh, and I think I'm going to bring that change I mean, this, still this season. The first title. Yeah, for sure. Like as a rookie, I went to the finals. Like like we talked about, I went to the finals. Didn't play to my own standard, mm-hmm. the way I wanted to play. So I'm having my own little revenge tour, but a, a battle within myself, um, not with anyone else. I feel like I have the most to prove going to the next tournament. Um, for sure, for sure. After having a hor- horrendous tournament. I mean, and, a and dookie performance. Chris, Chris keeps calling you out, you know. Um, know. He keeps saying you're the worst um, player in the league. You're a defensive, liabil- defensive liability. And even whenever we play Among Us, he always calls you out for being imposter. Um, absolutely no reason. <laughs> he always calls you out for being imposter. So, I mean, if honestly, if you win the championship, you will have the most bragging rights out of anyone because, especially with Chris, as he's one of your biggest haters and still your biggest hater to this day. So, if you prove that you can win a championship, it would be tremendous for your career and your legacy. I mean, I always live by the motto, believe in yourself, because, I mean, I brought myself here. I worked myself into the player I am for the past few years putting in the work every single day so of course. I feel like I don't have anything to prove to anyone else but at the same time I want to win this like it's, it's not about anyone else I want to win like I want right. to experience yeah. the feeling of being a champion again of course and the, every day in the community center that that's yeah. what we work towards winning in the winner's today, mentality i mean it's all it's all for this, this is yeah it's it transfers then more than just basketball like we're more than just athletes you know we're more than just like extremely gifted uh, murphy basketball players like we have lives that's outside that we can transfer these skills like learn from the community center like the leadership and hard work and the ethics learned through basketball like that transfers to every single aspect of life like family Education. career yeah like it's crazy. I'm Basketball is my my only love. Of course, I mean it should be. I, I yeah. know I didn't get to talk about this earlier, but some teammates I'd be interested in playing with. Well, I mean, right. I feel like of there's a case to be made for playing with every single player in the league. Like every player offers every something player different. Offers something different. Right. Like like uh, for yourself, it's an incredible offensive player in isolation. For Justin, it's a playmaker that plays hard on both ends. An incredible X Factor. Well or not, Justin's still going to give you the same thing. Like, right, energy. Mm-hmm. And sexy and jumper and move. Jumper of move. course. <laughs> Always off class. Always off class. <laughs> I mean, Garrett, he sets rock hard screens. You guys probably know about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's a tenacious rebounder. Goes yeah. Every single rebound. I hate guarding him. I mean, have you seen yeah. some of the rebounds he got over, like, Eli and Austin at the same time? Yeah. There's, like, nothing much you can do about that. I mean, Ian's going to offer an incredible first half performance. <laughs> <laughs> Ian can't finish, can't finish. I mean, he may not have, may not have pulled up in the uh, second half, but second half. what can I say? In the first half, he was lighting it up. He was lighting Chris up. Yeah, as, as a lot might say, he's a Hall of Fame practice player. <laughs> so uh, he's... And then the new addition, uh, Will Lederman. If he's a competitor that Garrett says he is, I mean, he's going to be out of good. Yeah, he will be. And obviously there's Adam Marcus too, who I have experience playing with him in the community center. Uh, he's privately conferred with me and told me that he wants to get revenge on his cousin. You know? mm, interesting. <laughs> interesting. Another, another, another story. Bon, bon. I'm not saying it's the second coming of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, but... <laughs> of course, of course. I mean, cousin on cousin matchup, two different players. I know. Justin got the best. I mean, I mean... But... This is once again kind of like the LeBron. Uh, I don't. I don't want to. You know what? I'll give him Ray Allen. Ray Allen. <laughs> I was going to give him Mario Chalmers, but. Are you are you calling Adam out? Or? I mean, I'm just saying. Like, you know, there's there's LeBron. And then there's like you know there's there's Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh who are there, and then there's like you know the rest of the team, and Adams among that. <laughs> yeah, you're you're saying he's just a role player. He's like another guy, you know. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, compared to me, I'm, I'm 
I, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I don't have to say much about it. Once so it's in the court. court. So what I'm understanding is that you're saying you're built different. Uh, I would be saying that as one of those. Yeah, 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 interesting. I mean, different numbers. numbers but don't exactly favor Adam. Zero points. No, I have to agree with them. Compared to Justin's, I think it was nine points, a career high. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's coming off. Let me double. Let me think. That's coming off of a zero point performance from Justin. So he completely redeemed himself. Yeah. Well, well, you know, I worked. I changed my game a little bit. bit. Of course. No, changed my jumper, made it sexier than before. (laughs) Here I I am. I mean, coming off of a disappointing finals loss, you have to think like, I gotta win it all next time. Yeah. It was quite frustrating. I know you. I know you wanted that game too because the ending to that game was a little iffy. You know. Yeah. Maybe or may or may not have been like a blown call, but the look on oh, Colonel Matt's, Matt's face when <laughs> he won the championship. Yeah. Oh, I forgot that uh, Matt might be a potential prospect. Not really sure about his whereabouts, but he know. also has a Hall of Fame bail. <laughs> um, honestly, one of the best bailers I've ever seen in my life. He's elite. What can I say? Yeah, he's a master of his craft. Hall of Fame bail bed, judge, <laughs> for sure. Happy it's said, not- though, he's a bruiser. Yeah, that's true. He could, he's, he has a different, every player is different and he brings something to the table that no other player in this league does. That's what I love about this league is that every single player brings something new to the table. Like, yeah. I mean, players might not be as good as the next player, but everyone's going to bring like something new. That's why this so, the, this league is so much better than the NBA, you know, because there's so much more parity, and every player is unique in their own way. In the NBA, there's a lot of replacements, like there's JJ Reddix, um, there's Kyle Korver's, but in the NBA, um, due to its small size and its immense amount of skill, every single player has their own capabilities and um, skills that they can bring to the table that can impact a champi- the championships, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not to take away from that either, like. Even though he does have Hall of Fame bail, he's still proven himself in the tournaments. He has of course. shipped his name. Of course. You know, some unorthodox finishes, but he gets the job done. He rebounds hard, plays defense, yeah. and he's a bruiser. He fouls. My, reminds me of a Charles Oakley. I know. Oh, it's it's like if Charles Oakley was actually good at basketball. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, literally, literally. But in song, finish the finish the thought. Um, so what you were saying about playing with who would you, who would you like to play with? I don't know, because it's hard to, since we use a, a lottery system, it's hard to predict who you're going to end up with. So I don't right. I don't know who to say, like, realistically, I could end up with, but hmm, it's tough. Someone who, who I absolutely do want to run it back with is Kai. Like, I felt okay. like he put the team on his back in the last first round game, you know, because okay. he was catching posts up, uh, finishing through contact, getting it done, playing great defense. But I feel like I was a letdown for our team, you know not being able to hit shots so yeah. I definitely want to make it up with him okay makes sense yeah that's interesting everything sounds great uh, I can't wait for the season to begin uh, what do you think like uh, we're going to start doing like the player pools and the draft coming up because it's N- November is rolling around Thanksgiving time everyone's going to be back mm-hmm. so it's all, b- only about a month away I'm thinking roughly uh, hopefully we can play some point in December and I mean, okay. obviously, I think everyone's going to be back in January, too. So, like... Yeah, I'll be here for most of January. If need be, we can push back to then. So, right. I mean, it's really dependent on uh, when people get here. Right. Because there are quite a few people that are out of state. Yeah. It, it will, might be tough around holiday season. Yeah. Um, but I know schools only close at, like, December... Um, like... I think finals week is like December 17th or something or December 7th or whatever it was. Um, so yeah, I think if you guys start like soon with the, like fi- at least like finalizing a player pool, that would be interesting. Just like think about, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, what can I say? It's going to be interesting. Like people are hungry for building. Absolutely. Hungry. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, playing indoors is going to be like a relief it's gonna be insane. It's gonna be one of the best feelings I've ever felt. Like in being my life. liberated. Yeah, honestly, it's gonna be like being freed from jail. Like no. not being able to play um, due to Corona is gonna be. It's super thrilling just to just be there in the environment, being indoors, just shooting around. We haven't played indoors in over half a year. That's crazy. Yeah. That is and crazy. by the time by the time we uh, play, it'll be like nine to ten months. Like that's mm-hmm. that's an insane amount of time. Like I haven't done that in over two years. You know, we've been 
we haven't I haven't not been in an indoor gym I know it's wild mm -hmm. it's hard to believe that the last time we spoke like when we had our last episode was over half a year yeah that, is crazy. That, that, was, that was that was before corona right or it was like no, no it was during it was during that's crazy that was in quarantine yeah that was during quarantine i remember that it was a time of such uncertainty like we ne we didn't know what was going on we didn't know if we could you know even get outside and play basketball for the next tournament you know like, it was yeah, just I such a crazy time. Time. that doesn't even yeah. feel like you, like you it, it doesn't feel like it was that long ago yeah honestly like it doesn't i stayed inside my house for two months straight in of this year which is such a long time but it doesn't feel like it was two months you know back then like looking back 2020 has been one of the slowest years and at the same time one of the fastest years in my life yeah, no. summer was amazing. Just together together yeah, yeah it was yeah, i really like summer like summer but when you finally go outside, outside and stuff and stuff honestly summer really probably fun. is probably the best time of my entire life this one's not great gonna summer. Yeah. yeah i don't know i mean i had a great summer as well yeah really getting to hoop getting yeah i know you guys hung out a lot like mm -hmm. together and just hooping together with you guys like it was amazing like it was so free like we had no responsibilities yeah. everyone was excited for college it was just super fun i can't wait to i can't wait for next summer another nbl tournament after the winter season it's gonna be fun hopefully was, things get things get more certain mm -hmm. during then. it was crazy like we would, nobody would even have to say anything we'd all just like show up to murphy around like three yeah go at it like it was just a, it was just a deal you know like we we played like every day and it wasn't even to work it was just for pure fun mm -hmm. so i'm no distractions too i mean we were out there just out falling the ball, ball nothing else in our minds yeah like we didn't have anything to worry about so i mean now with the winter yeah. tournament insights i'm sure everyone's gonna start to prepare to a certain extent you know start to get ready of course work on their of course. whether it's 2k or actually getting outside it's gonna be very very tough um because of the lack of indoor facilities to train mm -hmm. um as as it's getting colder to play outside um so this is going to be a tournament where it seems like everyone's less prepared and maybe stamina is lower and the shots might be off you know but for I, the first game but it's, it's all you. part of the game i know it's on you to stay in shape i mean look at the heat yeah like what, when everyone else is uh, enjoying like a vacation the heat put in the work yeah <clears throat> behind cameras there's nothing to stop you from being indoors like whether it's a gym or maybe it's your own room staying in shape yeah, exactly. Ami Jamal Murray's girlfriend from the work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it might have been a different kind of work, but. <laughs> what can I say? She would be. Yeah. 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 So, Justin, are you. Are there any courts nearby or. Um, there's like one or two off campus. I know that like I wasn't two or three of the kids in my hall have gone, but we even got to go like a bunch of us. Mm -hmm. So so we're trying to get that kind of organized. And I was going to go before I got locked in this hotel. Damn. But but you know, that's, yeah, that's I'll, I'll come back and I'll, I'll grind even harder. Harder. Top six. I mean, December's coming up quick. Mm. It is. It's fast approaching. It's crazy how time flies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hopefully we yeah, can cool set up, you know, start to put things into motion, yeah. figure out teams and lock in. That'll be great. Well, I can't wait. I mean, a whole new game. Yeah. This is why we play. Right, well, well, having you guys, uh, yeah, do you have any final thoughts, say. final reflections? Maybe something you want to touch up on uh, in six months? Justin? Ooh. Well, well, I gotta say, I'm looking forward to this tournament. Um, you know, I love being in the position where I can defend a championship, and I look forward to competing once again. And, um, I mean, that's all I gotta say. Rip Woo. Uh, yeah, yeah. Woo back Wednesday. Woo back Wednesday, baby, baby. <laughs> any thoughts, Dan? Uh, yeah, so this season is going to be interesting, this bubble season, as we talked about. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to speak too much because I feel like I've been talking a lot. So, yeah, I'm super excited for the future and I can't wait to look back on this podcast um, in six months from now, see, see what has changed and maybe even more than six months from now, you know, like a year down the line, two years, three years. Um, it'll be exciting to see how we've grown as people too, outside of the game of basketball. So Absolutely. yeah. All right, I'll just drop a couple final predictions. Is that 
I think that the Lakers are going to win the championship again. I think that's okay. a repeat. And I think that I am going to be one of the winners in the next Murphy basketball tournament. Okay. I'm just putting it out there. That was a little biased. Uh, the second second prediction was like a little take. biased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what but, I would say? Believe in yourself. So. Yeah, of course. Um, okay. But yeah, that's, I can't argue with that. So I mean, you know what that bum Kevin Garnett said? Anything is possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bum? Bum. <laughs> but yeah, anything is possible, man. Anything is possible um, in basketball and outside of basketball. Like I can't wait to see you guys after we graduate college. Like what, what each other's gonna do? Mm-hmm. How basketball is um, pertains yeah. to our life after that? I like, I would love to get a career in the, like pertaining related to basketball because basketball is my only like true true passion. You know. That'd be incredible. So, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, this whole med thing works out. Thing works out. I'll yeah, be operating on some of the players. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, all I'm and saying is, all I'm saying is, I'll, I'll have Insung design my shoes of course, uh, from Nike. <laughs> yeah, like it'll be exciting, man. I can't wait to grow with you guys. I've been growing with you guys um, since the start of high school um, through mm-hmm. basketball. Mm-hmm. It's brought us so much, so many opportunities. So if one of us makes wait it, for the future. Get, if one of us makes it, we need to build an indoor basketball court. Of course, I've already had that plans. Right. You got the blueprints down? blueprints down? Yeah, of course. Like once, once. Uh, I become a multi-millionaire like I'll pay your guys college tuition off uh, and I'll facil- I'll build, build like AU centers like in Natick and Framingham not Framingham so actually tough. but in Natick <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> like I want to do big things for Natick you know Natick such a great town like people a lot of people hate on it for absolutely no reason but Natick is like ever since I moved here um, coming from the place I came from like it was very tough but Natick honestly served me so well and I'll always be great, grateful that I lived in Natick it was such a beautiful town so never well, forget where you came from no matter where you just go just to get from Natick just to get from Natick of course try for great <laughs> alright next time in mean, six months alright alright right. of course bro thank you see you guys thank you this is always so much fun mm-hmm. yeah